All right. So YouTube recommended the Cynthia G video about black men being expendable. Now, I'm not going to go through the definition. Go Google it. The question becomes, Cynthia G, who is not expendable? Outside of the top 1% of men, primarily men, primarily white men in America, who is not expendable? Now, let's go through some numbers. Many of my followers have already heard these numbers. I'm sorry. Bear with me. Let's go through them still. 40% of Americans, that's not exclusive to black people. That's Americans writ large. 40% of Americans cannot afford a $400 emergency. 60% of Americans cannot afford a $1,000 emergency. 80% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. That's the world where Cynthia G is telling you black men are expendable. Right? Okay, let's keep on going. Out of the about 330 million Americans, 160 million Americans work. Out of that 160 million Americans that work, about half of that, so about 80 million Americans, make $31,000 a year or less. That's the world where Cynthia G is telling you black men are expendable. Post-COVID-19, this is not 2019, 2018, 2010, 2000, 1995. No, we're living in the 21st century. We're living post-COVID-19. And yet Cynthia G is telling you black men are expendable in this era. In the era where Biden is attempting to pass a, a three plus trillion dollar plan to essentially keep this economy afloat, put people back to work, to fix the roads and the bridges, right? To have um, community college be free for your first two years. That's the world where Cynthia G is telling you black men are expendable. Where over the past decade, we have been watching brick and mortar stores close their doors because they've been priced out the game. They've gone bankrupt. Amazon and other online companies like that have priced them out. That's the world where Cynthia G is telling you black men are expendable. The gigification of America going on day by day. The world where companies like Burger King are telling their employees, we would rather automate than pay you $15 an hour. That's the world where Cynthia G is telling you Black men are expendable. Jeff Bezos taking rocket ships into space while his drivers, Amazon drivers, are peeing in bottles so that they can still make the delivery on time and not get fired. That's the world where Cynthia G is telling you black men are expendable. White people, primarily white men, all through the Midwest, overdosing on drugs because their life is looking bleaker and bleaker. They've been fired or let go from their factory jobs. Their future doesn't look bright. They have the Sackler family pushing drugs all through the country, but primarily through the Midwest. And that's the world where, once again, Cynthia G is telling you, black men are expendable. Truck drivers are afraid of automation coming in. And replacing them over the next decade or so. And that's the world where Cynthia G is telling you black men are expendable. Right? We're watching automation eat up blue collar job in even cer certain service sector jobs. While machine learning is biting in to white collar jobs and corporate jobs. And jobs where you sit at your cubicle. And that's the world where Cynthia G is telling you black men are expendable. My question to y'all once again is, who is not expendable? Number one. Number two, why do we follow? And I say we loosely. I know my followers don't follow her necessarily, but y'all know who she is. But why do we follow these weirdos in the black community? These emotionally stunted people. 
Some of these people use four and five syllable words. Some of them are even educated. Some of them are articulate and well-spoken. But emotionally, they are seven-year-olds. They're still throwing temper tantrums about who didn't want them in middle school and high school, who used their gas and didn't put gas back in their car when they were in college, who insulted them or ignored them when they were a kid, who insulted their looks when they were young, when they were a child, or even a young adult. Some of these people are well into their 30s, their 40s, maybe even their 50s. These people are parents and grandparents. And they still sound like a scarred, bitter, angry seven-year-old. Throwing adult temper tantrums all through the internet on your favorite platforms. IG, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat. These people are emotionally stunted people. They have arrested development of their emotions, of their psyche. And when you hear these people speak, just think to yourself how broken they must be. And then ask yourself, how broken are you to follow them and to mm-hmm and aha and clap it up for them in the comment section? Why? Because they're saying something that you believe in at your core? Is this going to help you? Cynthia G is literally asking, or not even she's asking, it was a rhetorical question, telling you that black men are expendable. In 2021, the question is, in a country where the top 1% owns 95% of the financial wealth, who is not expendable? In a country where 40% of Americans cannot afford a $400 emergency. 60% of Americans cannot afford a $1,000 emergency. And 80% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Who is not expendable? Can Cynthia G. answer that question? If black men are expendable, okay, let's say I agree. Because we live in a capitalist society. Okay, black men are 6.1 of the nation's population. They're spread out across the nation. Mainly live in the South, but they're spread out across the nation. Okay, black men are expendable. Who isn't expendable then in this capitalist society? Neoliberal society. Who isn't expendable? Are Asian men not expendable? What happened with the H-1B visas when Trump repealed them? Are women not expendable? What happened to women when the government told them to go home during COVID-19? Who isn't expendable? I already mentioned white men in the Midwest. Okay, there you go. Or white people generally in the Midwest, but white men in particular. Who isn't expendable? Is it the Latinos all across the West Coast that that work gig jobs, are not in a union, are not working a nine to five, who can pass out or pass away at their job and Well, their family's just going to have to find a way to pay for that funeral. Who isn't expendable, Cynthia G? Who? A U.S. soldier? Who? Who? We just watched, what, how many U.S. soldiers get killed in in Afghanistan a couple days ago, a couple weeks ago? Who is not expendable is the question. You live in a country with give or take 330, 340 million people. Half of those people have a job. And then half of those people that have a job make less than 40, more more than half of those people that have a job make less than $40,000 a year, make less than $35,000 a year, actually. Who is not expendable? Who? See, I can take you saying black men are not expendable. Fine. But black men are not expendable in a vacuum. That's why I ask who isn't expendable? Who is not? Do you know what country you're living in? 
what society you're living in, what economic structure you're living in. Once again, 40% of Americans cannot afford a $400 emergency. Marriage is at a 150-year low, mainly because men are like, yeah, no, I can't afford this. Nope. And that's the world and that's the country that Cynthia G is telling you that black men are expendable. Where companies would rather, rather automate than pay a minimum wage of $15 an hour. That's the world where Cynthia G is telling you that black men are expendable. Only one third of Americans make $50,000 a year or more. That's the world where Cynthia G is telling you that black men are expendable. Everybody talks about this 10% of Americans that make $100,000 a year or more. It's actually less than 10% of Americans. And then, and by the way, that's American workers. It's less than 10%. It's something like 5 or 5% 5 if you count all Americans. But out of American workers, it's 10%. That's the world where Cynthia G is telling you that black men are expendable. Once again, who is not expendable? And then again, on top of that, who are these weirdos like Cynthia G? These emotionally stunted people. These people that have arrested developments of their emotions and of their psyche. Who are these people? And why do people follow these people? Why do people listen to these people? And agree with these people. Who are you? This is, it's frightening to think that the black community in America is only about 50 years out of Jim Crow. And yet they sound so ahistorical. They sound so, quite frankly, anti-black about black people and black experiences. And black struggle. And even use terminology like no struggle love, which, by the way, I'm probably going to touch on on, a, on a, another video. This is some weird, anti-black, white supremacist, white hyper-capitalist foolishness. And for a black woman to be speaking like this in this society, at this late date, that shows how bitter and angry she is, how ahistorical she is. How she lacks situational awareness. She doesn't realize what era she's living in. And even if all of those things were tr were false, even if I was wrong about all of those things, you're dealing with a black woman that simply doesn't care. Her bitter and her anger, her bitterness and her anger is the most dominant thing about her. It doesn't matter what type of word she used, how articulate she is, right? Four and five syllable words. She can enunciate them really well. That doesn't mean anything. Show me you when you're angry and bitter. I could show you that's the real you. When you're a resentful person. When you're a spiteful person. When you're being spiteful. I can show you that's the real you. So I'll, I'll, I'll pause right there. I'm coming to the close. Y'all, be careful following these people. This is an emotionally stunted woman. We already know about her background. We already know who she had a child with. We already know what she's doing um, when she's bringing on these, these weird white dudes and whatnot. Once again, outside of the top 1% of Americans who are mainly white men, the question remains. Cynthia G, I would love for you to answer this question. Who in America, if black men are expendable, who in America is not expendable? And even with that top 1%, what we find oftentimes is their wealth is built on a house of cards. It's a house of cards. Their wealth isn't built on anything tangible. It's built on their personality. They stop showing their face every five seconds. Their wealth disappears. So once again, who in America is not expendable outside of that top 1%? And I'll pause right there. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Ladies, I definitely want to hear what y'all think. Because once again, who isn't expendable?
would you say you're not expendable? If your job was to fire you today, would they not be able to replace you at the snap of a finger? Even if you have a business, if your business was to close close shop tomorrow, is it possible that another company or another person couldn't move into that same location and do the same thing you were doing like tomorrow? So y'all let me know what y'all think. I'll pause right there. Y'all have a good day. And stop following these weirdos.